And we are live. And welcome, Judith. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I am well today. Thank you. Today, I feel energized and focused and like, right, get on it, woman. That's, that's, that's <laughs> where I'm at today. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good I just feel like I want to crawl into bed and like not get out for another day or two that's that's how I feel so I'm glad one of us is energized um so I'm really excited to talk about our topic today sound healing um wasn't something that I had come across before um I met you and it's a really I, I wouldn't you can tell me if I could class it as a therapy um but it's a it, therapy is not really the right word um I don't think yeah, yeah therapy not the right treatment word, process yeah process maybe it's it's an um, um what's the word um tool i would say it's a really i think it's a really um interesting tool or a uh, healing mechanism that that we all have that um it's not widely spoken about yet um there was one other person that i met over the weekend who does um vocal toning which is really interesting um to help sort of balance the chakras um mm -hmm. and that was a, a really interesting um learning experience but when we spoke and we did the um the humming um i was really surprised to see how quickly and how effectively it could shift emotions because you come across these things and sometimes they have um this uh, association of it being, I don't like to use the word woo, -woo but people know what woo, -woo means. Yeah. <laughs> and you think, yeah. Yeah, and there and is, there's a lot of that. It's, it's very associated with woo, spiritual, call it what you like. Um, the joy I feel of, and I work with the sounds, with the chakra energies as well. It's very much a core element of some of the work that I do. And, it, you know, it can be, I think this is the thing, it can be deeply spiritual, alternative, hippy dippy woo, connect to your angels, if you want it to be. It is also a physical practice that can be incredibly physical and practical. So the why I love it so much is because I can use it with different clients from different angles i've got one client who she's like not woo don't want to don't want to deal with chakras don't want to deal with crystals um the whole the highest self angel thing means nothing to me i was like okay great so then we just we use the physical elements of the body it's like how does this physically feel in your body and what energy does that give you and what emotions do you connect to that? So it, it can be as, as purely practical or as delightfully spiritual as people want it to be. So it's, it's, that's part of its power. So talk to us about what, um, what it is and how somebody can understand a little bit more about the background and how you got into it. So I sound healing is as, a, as a genre is the use of sound waves to impact the physical, mental, emotional, and energetic bodies. So for example, we can go as simple as, in hospitals, they use sound waves to break down kidney stones in your body, yeah. right? Um, they use sound waves to show you uh, the tissues, the damaged tissues in the body without creating further damage. They use sound waves to show you the baby in the womb. So sound is used for a myriad of, of medical treatments because it's, it's ultrasound and it's the sound waves that then bounce off the tissues and show or with the kidney stones and with some cancers as well. They, they put the sound to a specific frequency and it's that frequency which breaks up the physical barrier. So if we think of the concept of an opera singer finding the right pitch that makes a crystal glass shake. That sound, those sound waves are matching the, the same energy, the, the physical frequency of that crystal glass. And if you maintain that sound, the glass will vibrate and vibrate because it's, it's resonating with those sound waves. And then if you keep feeding that fixed element with those sound waves, when something vibrates enough, it then shatters. 
from a, a healing perspective, sound therapy, how does that work? So, so that's, so that's the, the, the physical, yeah. So that's the physical element of it. So you can feel where you have blocks because your body responds when you're even whether you're in a gong bath or a crystal bowl or a didgeridoo session or whether you are receiving sound healing from me or doing it for yourself or other sound healers do exist by the way um, <laughs> i feel like i'm advertising on the bbc uh, <laughs> funny. Um, when you're receiving it your body will respond to the sound so you'll feel where the physical tension in is and the physical tension is very often a reflection of emotional tension. So this is how it then works on an emotional level. So if you're, you hold your emotions, your memories, your experiences in both your subconscious brain and in your body's cell memory. Right? Everyone has physical cell memory. And you know this because when you, you can walk into a room and you'll instantly know whether it feels safe or whether it feels a little bit dodgy. You know, or you'll hear a sound that reminds you of something and your whole body will go onto alert. Or you'll hear a sound that reminds you of something fabulous and your whole body will go into bliss. So sound and your, your body and sounds that it hears and feels because it's a physical thing. So your body feels the sound waves. When you are feeling those sounds, it brings up the emotions. And so if we allow the sounds, if we continue the sounds, it means we continue to allow those emotions. And the first step of any healing is recognizing that we're holding on to something. It's recognizing what the problem is, whether they are physical, mental, or emotional symptoms, or whether they are actually deeper. And this is where sound really works because it there's no barrier to sound. So it cuts right through very often to where we're holding the cause. And so if we bring up emotions, very often what happens is I will be sounding with someone or I'll get a client to sound with me. And they'll go, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound there. Don't like those sounds. It's like, boom, barrier. It's like, okay, that's all right. We don't have to. And this is where I feel voice vibration sound healing is a different level to receiving from instruments. Because when you are uh, making the sound, you're in control of how deep you go. As you experienced when I took you into the, the sounding practice. So if you are making the sound, you will physically and emotionally feel the stuff come up. And it's like, oh yeah, there it is. That's, that's, that's my gunk. <laughs> which is very often our fears, our, our, our anger, our frustration, our uh, logged beliefs. And then it's up to you whether you keep sounding that sound, which has brought them up, so that you can, like the crystal glass, keep sounding that sound. So the emotions, are, you keep bringing up the emotions, keep bringing up the emotions until the emotions have to go and release. Or... You can, if you're not in the state for that, you can be gentler with yourself and sound a little bit above and a little bit below because the vib sound is vibration and your voice is vibration. I work with the voice in everything I do, whether it's sound healing or helping people speak with more confidence. It's all about the voice vibration. So, you know, when something vibrates, it, it travels. So if sounding the sound say so this is the emotion and this is your sound waves and this is the perfect frequency that goes right into the center of those emotions if that's too much for you right you can sound a little bit above because this vibration is still going to get vibrate and it's still going to gently ease into these emotions as opposed to going to the heart of it and um, the way i describe it is like if you've got a bruise if you press the center of the bruise, it can be really painful and it's too much. If you gently rub around the edges of the bruise, it brings healing. So you can choose to do that with your sound. And that's how it works as a healing process. There's a whole other element to it, which is the recognizing what you're holding, allowing yourself to acknowledge your truths that maybe you've been hiding from yourself or you have been hiding away because it's been too much or you don't want to acknowledge it. Um, but that that's 
going deeper into the work as well. I find it uh, like when when we did like a little session, I didn't have any expectations with it because I didn't know what it was. Um, and I think that helps as well when you don't you come into something with no expectations because then you have no preconceived judgments or um, you, you don't you don't come in with any sort of beliefs around what it should or shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we did it, you you asked me to choose something that I wanted to to work on. Yeah, uh, and I remember I chose my my specific topic, and within was it what less than ten minutes? I felt like I was ready to start. Like I was like, okay, that's enough. I don't want to go any further. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what is this? Like you know, just from using your voice, you, it shifted something, um, and it's nothing like anything I have ever come across before. And why I wanted to do this um this interview was because a lot of the times. I find that with the specific group of people that I'm working with now that have come into my into my life as a as a personal trainer, and I would say slash health coach now, all within the last sort of couple of years, all have had some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder that they have experienced. Um, all have some sort of anxiety or depression or mood state uh -huh. or inability to lose weight, um, consistently keep that weight off. And I was like, okay, why? why this particular group because it's every, nothing happens just by chance everything happens for a reason uh and so as i began to collaborate more with other practitioners i came across different types of therapies that are not traditional traditional says okay you have anxiety or depression or whatever else medicate it go seek external help um and then you learn to suppress it or deal with it um from sort of a What's the word I'm looking for? It's sort of like putting a bandage on top of the wound, never fully eradicates. And yeah. the therapy, the therapy modalities that I'm coming across now, like this weekend when we when we did the wellness weekend, which is why I'm not coming today because I'm like pretty. I wish I told you that <laughs> I'm pretty much <laughs> done. <laughs> um, you know, you go through all of these, and I, I say that in a really good way, done as in like I've yeah. reached my max with it. Um, you go through these 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 healing mechanisms that you lead you guide with the support of somebody else and just with the power of sound or just with the power of your imagination or just with the power of intention you take yourself to that that place and sometimes it doesn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel safe in a way but it's not unsafe it's safe in a way because you 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 have to let go of that control right and that's um, my job my, my job is to be there holding the space so that you feel held so that you feel safe to go to your personal challenge place and then when you allow yourself to take that step because one of the talks that we were doing spoke i realized that until until you're willing to let go of of that familiarity, uh, you know, with sort of a subconscious level of discomfort, because you're not willing to just dig it up and like muck it out. Until you're willing to let go of that, you'll never really live your best life or your truest version of yourself or your highest authentic self, because it's too much gunk. And when you when you take that step forward, it's just it's freeing. It's exhausting because it's like you ha it's like your body goes oh. And so when we did that session, you know, within 10 minutes, I couldn't believe that that could actually work. So I want to share this with people so that people could understand that, you know, there are, it mightn't be for everybody, but the people who it is meant for, it's who it's meant for and it will yeah. help. And I feel like this should be on the forefront of what healing modalities are available because we all have that power within us. And that was what I took away this weekend. We all have the power within us to heal ourselves. And I think that's so freeing and so liberating because you you know, like there's in the Bible, they talk about you are gods. And then this weekend we have the power. So it, it thinks, oh, okay, like, you know, life has been pretty tough and I've gone through some really difficult situations, but I actually can do this. Um, I actually have the power. And I think when you know that it allows you to create the life that you want on a different level. So can you yes. can you talk to us more about how you got into sound healing? 
Yeah. So I, my background is 20 years as a classically trained professional actor. It's all I ever wanted to do. I spent a lot of my life trying to avoid it because I, um, I, I thought that it's a tough profession, which it is, um, but I didn't allow myself to be special enough. Um, have I got it? It's all What's those a lovely classically beliefs. Classically trained actor. What is so it? It means I. So it means I went to drama school. It means I trained. So classically trained in this country means that you trained in voice, body, awareness, and through the established methods of becoming an actor, as opposed to someone who maybe just sort of found their career by getting a job, getting a job, getting a job. So voice training is like classically trained for me. If I, when I was an agent, there are lots of different trainings out there now and like they're not particularly, they're not necessarily bad. There's some great different ways of going into acting. But for me, classically trained means you know stagecraft. So you know the power of different PowerPoints on the stage, you know where, where you stand, you know how you impact other people. That gets taught with classically trained voice 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 and voice is a, a huge part of classical training and uh, body awareness so they would be the things that i think sometimes when you've had three years of working on your voice that's classically trained that's classically trained actor as opposed to someone who maybe had a semester of some voice classes so um so that was my background and because of that i spent a lot of time temping and I was always a natural healer. So ever since I was a kid, I very spiritual stuff. I would talk what I now know is light language. I would make up, so sound has always been a massive part of my life. I would make up songs all the time. I would talk to my, what I now know are my guides, but I would, I would talk to a brick in the wall at school. And there was a specific tree that I would talk to when I was a kid as well. And I, so I now know that those are my guides that I was, so I was always connected in that way. And to support my acting career, I trained as a massage therapist. And then I discovered Earth Flight Reiki. And then I discovered voice vibration sound healing. And while I was doing that, one of my massage clients said to me, Judith, you're an actress. And I said, yes. <laughs> she said, and you do that stuff with sound because I, I run sonic <laughs> meditations as well. And people just don't get the sound healing. Uh, and I said, yes. She said, my husband's got to give a talk to 80 solicitors next week and he hates public speaking. Uh, could you help him? And I was like, oh, fear, fear, you know, all my limiting beliefs. Who am I? A failed, failed 37 year old actress um, helping a 65 year old magistrate. Like, who am I to do that? Anyway, thankfully, I was listening to my intuition that day and my whole body was saying yes, even though my brain was going, really? My body was going, yes. So I said, yes. Um, I helped him with a speech that he was giving. And then I put that out to my massage clients. And that's when one of my other massage clients who also had had sound healing, which really helped her with her pregnancy and her birth. That's a whole other way of using sound. Um, and she was trained as a coach. And in our session, she said, oh, I didn't know you're a coach. I said, I'm not. She said, but you've got a coach. I said, what are you talking about? I coach what? No. She goes, but what you're doing is coaching. She goes, we're only five minutes in, but you're, you're coaching me. I'm like, I don't know, this is just how I work. So anyway, then I went and trained as a life coach. <laughs> right, I didn't know that's so your life coach as well. That's very yeah. good. That's powerful. Yeah. I so like that. all of those together, bringing all those different qualities, the awareness of the body from anatomy and physiology from my massage training, the awareness of body and voice, at 20 years as a professional actor, the power of sound healing, which helped me clear so much of my emotional gunk and the power of coaching. So that's what's come together to create your whole voice, which is what I do now. Question. How did you help the magistrate? Oh, bless him. So he was, <laughs> so Bruce, uh, he's not with us anymore, unfortunately. He was also a, a massage client of mine. And um, so he, I went up there and, and he had this speech and he was giving this, he was telling me this speech. And I was like, and remember, may I remind, I was in fear. Like I was, I was in full imposter syndrome in that room. 
what I was listening to and <clears throat> I don't, nothing of this sounds true. Like where's his, where's his truth? Where's his passion for this? Where's that? And I was just like, okay. And I had all my fault, like my folder of drama school voice exercises with me. I put them to one side and this mm -hmm. is before I trained as a coach, mind you. And I went, Bruce, let's, let's forget the speech. Um, why is this important to you? Like, and what are you afraid of? Why don't you like public speaking? And oh, because they're just going to think it's boring. I was like, right, well, there's our first challenge. If you think you sound boring, guess what's going to happen? You're going to sound boring. And then it's like, so what are you passionate about? And I just worked with him and I got him to, and this is what I work with, with everyone on voice, whether it's sound healing or speaking coaching. It's about finding your truths and connecting to that passion behind your purpose and to finding what's lying underneath your fear. And when we reconnected him to why international shipping law and this specific part of international shipping law was really important, right? I don't need to know the topic. <laughs> <laughs> when he was reconnected to that, then we went back to his speech and everything had changed. There was variety of tone, there was pace, there was, and then I worked with posture and exercises for him to do before he went to do it. And he nailed it. And in fact, at his funeral, um, I was standing waiting for the food in, in line and people behind said, oh, so how did you know Bruce? And I said, oh, I'm the family massage therapist. Um, <laughs> and then I said, because um, literally I did Bruce, his wife, their two children, their, their, their husbands. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, and then I said, and also, um, Bruce actually started me in my business now because Bruce was my first vocal confidence client. I worked on a speech that he did. And this one man went, was that the speech on da 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 da? And I was like, about this year, many years ago. I went, yeah, that's the one. He went, I remember that. And I remember thinking, what's changed in him? That's different to the last time I saw him speak. And another woman in the queue went, oh, um, do you have a card by any chance? I know it's a funeral, but... <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's amazing. So you said something that I wanted to dive a little bit in because we talk about this a lot and um, sometimes people glaze over it without understanding fully how to do it. Finding your truth. How? Because mm. that's not, that's not an easy, I, I don't think that's easy. I think as we grow and evolve every single day, you're still finding your truth, right? Yeah. Our truth evolves. And that's, that's the thing we need to learn and remember is that what was true, we probably made up it may not even have been true. It might have been our the truth from our perspective, but it might not have been truly true. And we are holding, most of us are holding on to truths that we formed from age four to 14. And they are running us. And your real truth is probably the opposite of what, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, it's probably the opposite of what your, um, your challenged truth is. So the simplest way for me to describe this is for many years, so my, my dad had lots of affairs um, and I was eight when I first told my mom to get divorced. And yeah, so my truth for a long time was uh, all men are evil. Uh, or all men will hurt you and do not let yourself open up to them because they will hurt you. Yeah. Um, but it, my truth for a long time was I hate my dad. Right, that was it. That's the truth I lived with for, for a long time. In my teenage years, it was very angry and um, slightly alcohol supported. Um, <laughs> 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 um, oh, you're funny. <laughs> and then into my, into my early sort of mid 20s, that became a really cold indifference it was like and I always to my credit I always said you know what I hate my dad but he's helped make me the way I am and I like who I am so I, I always said that so then it kind of went to cold indifference it's just like meh to the point that when I was backpacking from the age of 24 to 26 yeah um the number of times people who'd been traveling with me for a little bit, you know, you pick up people and then you lose them. The number of times people would say, um, can I ask, you know, is, is your dad still around? Did he, did he pass? I'm like, oh no, he lives in, um, I don't know, Hampshire or somewhere. 
Oh, okay. And, yeah. um, and they're like, oh, it's just you never talk about him. I'm like, no, because he has nothing to do with my life. So, I, so my truth became, I'm indifferent to my dad. Then in my late 20s, early 30s, I came to a cognitive forgiveness for him. I was like, you know what? He didn't know what he was doing. He did most of what he did to mom. Um, you know, I, I forgive him for that, but not for other stuff. And then, mm-hmm. so you see we, how we change, our truth changes as we go through life. Then in my mid thirties, when I discovered sound healing, uh-huh, uh-huh. I had a massive awareness. So I was um, doing a sound healing course where I actually had a different perspective and I realized I came to compassion for my dad because a lot of what I blamed him for, I was blaming him for things that he didn't actually know because I was eight years old and hiding them from him. So I was blaming him for stuff. So it's his actions that made me behave like that, but he didn't actually know it, yet I was blaming him for it. And then I had a sound healing. And the, uh, the woman who was doing the healing with me She encouraged me to sound and I was sounding. So this is where we start. We start from the, you know, from exploring your sound, connecting it to the emotions. And then if you're brave and if you trust the person who's holding the space with you, you just let it go. And I was sounding and I was, there was snot and there was tears. That's where I didn't want to go. (laughs) the The only thing I could compare it to was like a Native American mourning, as in grief song. It was it was that repetitive repetitive thing, and it was, uh, 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 and it was, just, and I knew it was grief and this outpouring of grief. And it was then that I was like, who and what am I grieving? And I was like, oh, I'm grieving the relationship I never wanted from with my, I never had with my dad. So then I had to accept a new truth, which was, I wanted a relationship with my dad, which I'd never allowed myself to accept before. And then it got to a point where. In the summer of 2016, I was slightly suicidal, thoughts, not plans or actions. Um, and I was using all my tools, so all my coaching tools and all my sounding tools. And I bought myself, I did an exercise on myself and I went, oh! and it was that moment of hitting my truest truth. The one that I had been hiding from myself for my whole life, which was, I want to be wanted by my dad. And I hadn't allowed myself to know that I'd hidden that away. So that's when we talk about truth and when I speak about your truest truth, it's often the thing that's hidden so deep in us because we've been believing the other truths for so long because, and those truths help protect us through life. But when we find that it's like having a symptom, like at the moment I've got, I don't know if we can see it on there, I've got a funny thing on my finger, right? Which you might not be able to see. It's a reddish thing? Yeah, Yeah. Um, I think it's a circulation thing. It might be chill blains, um, but this is a symptom, right? And it's a symptom probably to do with my circulation. So, but my stuff, all of my stuff, all of my emotion stuff, my relationship stuff through my life, there was the truth I hadn't seen, was not allowing myself to be gentle enough to want to be wanted by my dad. And when I hit that truth, whew, everything else lifted all the needing to have to be strong all the time, the having to be independent, the, it was just like allowing myself to want to be wanted. So how did I change your relationship with your dad? Um, I used all my other tools, my uh, vocal confidence tools around how to have challenging conversations. And I did all my stuff that I do with my clients and I broke down my one thing I needed to say to him. And luckily he's still alive. So I, I, I said, you know, I know you don't like talking about emotional stuff and da da da. And he said, of course, I'll speak with you. And I said to him, and I said, and I had to be prepared to hear him not just say no. If he said, no, I didn't want you. Like, that's what I trained myself my whole life to believe. So I had to be prepared to believe it if he said yes. And this is the challenge when we start looking at ourselves with self-improvement. The same for your clients with their weight loss, right? It's like, what's the emotional thing that stops you? What are you holding on to physically to keep you grounded and feeling safe and your layers of fat that are protecting you, right? That is a protection. What is it that you're not wanting to look at? And for me, it was, I want to be wanted and accepting it if he said yes, which he did. 
And it was, you know, and it was in that moment, it was just, but even for me, acknowledging it, acknowledging myself, because it's like, there's me, there's really, there's a part of me that I've been denying my whole life. So even if that person, even if my dad had not been alive, or if he had said, uh, no, I don't want to talk about that emotional stuff. Me coming to understand myself was the biggest, it made so much sense of my relationships, of my working patterns, of so much. It's like, oh, there's that part of me that I'd been denying because we're not connected to our whole truth and our whole self. And that is reflected in our voice. So when, that's when truth talk, on a deep level. <laughs> but that's, that's powerful because when you talk about voice, let's talk about how we use, because I'm talking and I'm like, okay, my voice sounds like that, but I'm controlling my voice because we always do, right? To sound a certain way. How do you... How do you how do you listen to voice and know how to use it in a healing way for yourself? Because it's something that we use every day, in, right? Yeah. So how do you do? You, do you know what I'm trying to ask you? Yeah. Mm. So and I'm aware of time. I'm aware we've only got about five minutes or so left. So oh, we can go about. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's there's two ways that we use uh, we can use our voice, and everyone. This is this is what I love about voice vibration sound healing is it's accessible to everyone um, because we all have a voice of sorts. Even those people who are selectively mute can still make sounds. Um, so it's that ability to feel your energy from within. So you, it's you using your voice for healing and we'll go through a little exercise, a mini exercise for that, but also in how you are speaking. And, and so that's the other side of my work, which is finding your voice to be able to speak with confidence with clarity to ask for what you want in any situation to have those challenging conversations and so that your voice is reflecting your truth not your fears because most people go into situations like that and you're and it's like right <sighs> i've built myself up I can go and I'm going to go and ask for that pay rise or I'm going to tell that client, I'm going to ask that client to work with me and I've just put my prices up. And I, I remember the first time I put my prices up and someone actually asked me how much it was to work with me and I having to be able to confidently say it's oof, so what, yeah, whatever your situation is, it's allowing yourself to come from your truth, not your fear. And that impacts your tone. I'm just writing notes here because <laughs> it's so powerful even though I know I'm recording this <laughs> yeah it's fine okay um and Tell having truth, having a higher purpose that is connected to your deepest truth so for example I have a around my business I have a deepest truth that is everyone can speak with confidence that's that's my truth my higher purpose is to positively impact the lives of more than a hundred million people by creating more confident, connected communicators. And that's not creating a hundred million more confident, connected communicators, that's impacting lives. Because like, when I worked with the chair of the board of a bank to help her have a really challenging conversation she needed to have with the CEO of the bank, that session with her is likely to impact every single employee of that bank and their family and the people who they work with. So that's why, that, but that's that higher purpose. So when I'm nervous, so when I had that session with that chair of the board of the bank, which trust me, I was full imposter, failed actress me, right? Before I went into that room, I'm like, right, deep is true, higher purpose. This gives me the confidence to connect to the passion behind my purpose, to my truth. And I'm going to speak from my truth, not my fear. My truth that if she manages to have this really difficult conversation with a successful outcome because of what we've done today, this could positively impact thousands of lives. And that's my higher purpose. So I'm going in there from that truth, not my fear that she's going to think, I'm a failed actress or I'm 20 years younger than her. What have I got to teach her or any of my other fears that were all just made up in my head? 
was tapping into to that. Okay. I love this. I know we said short, but you have, the, it's powerful stuff. One more question and we can try it. So with your imposter syndrome, which we, cause I think this is a big thing for everybody, especially for me, um, in my field as well. And for things that I want to work on imposter syndrome, and I don't know if you're in clubhouse now, but you know, they're Android. Okay. Oh, okay. It'll Maybe it's, it's a good soon. thing. Yeah, no, because it's so addicting. Like it's, almost too much you know because yeah. there's a room every hour on the hour 24 7 on something and it's just like the, it's created this huge fear of missing out um sort of uh, environment where i'm just like no just enough but there are rooms on imposter syndrome and overcoming that and what i find really interesting is um hearing that you know even some of the most successful people have imposter syndrome and it's just sort of like um that that voice that negative inner critic that stops us from achieving our best potentials because at the end of the day nobody's ever going to be perfect nobody's ever going to have everything done no one is ever going to be and you know we throw this word around expert a lot which i think mm -hmm. creates imposter syndrome for me at least and because I feel like, oh, my God, I don't know everything about everything in my field. And it's not possible. Like we were never designed. I mean, every day in science and you would relate because you're sort of in it's scientific what you're doing as well. We're creating and finding out and discovering new things. And so I feel like just understanding that as human beings, we were never designed to know everything. We were never designed to be experts. I don't really agree with that term. Um, we it's, it's a continuum of learning that's not linear. And when yeah. you allow yourself to just show up as the best version of yourself, irrespective of, you know, what you haven't accomplished that maybe for a reason, you know, your highest self, your guardians, your guides didn't allow that to happen because it wasn't within your path of, of highest alignment. You let all of that go and then you, you, you flourish and then you help other people to thrive. So I think that's amazing. And um, not comparing mm. yourself to others, whether they are in your field or not. It's so to do that, yeah. You know, it would be really easy for me to have compared myself to Sarah, the chair of the board of the bank. But it's like, but actually, she doesn't do what I do. She has expertise and stuff that, you know, give her a spreadsheet. I'm sure she, you know, in fact, I'd love her to take my business spreadsheets and tell me what to do with them. Right. She's been she's been CEO of three international companies. <clears throat> she has expertise in that. I have expertise in sound healing. I am. And this is the difference which I want to share with everyone. It's about how you phrase things for yourself. So <clears throat> I had this about the word authority the other week. You can be an expert. You don't have to be the expert. You can have expertise and still that still leaves room for growth and more learning. So you can own your own authority. You can be an authority on. You don't have to be the authority on. around all over clubhouse and i think so many people are like well i can't really do that because i'm not an expert and i'm like expert what is an expert so but authority resonates with me right now <laughs> i like that a yeah. great exercise someone shared uh, a couple of years ago at an event i was speaking at which i love is if you imagine yourself in a, in a in a row of people right and there's someone holding this hand and there's someone holding this hand and this person is behind you and this person's ahead of you to this person i'm the expert because I am one step ahead of them. I know that bit more than them. Yeah. To me, this person is my expert. But to this person, this person might be too far ahead of them to think that they can approach. So if I didn't exist to be their expert, they might never do anything because they feel this is too far a jump. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, I love it. Love the conversation today. So let's do. Um, let, I want you to demo what um, uh, a sound healing session with you looks like. Because I know, um, off the back of my trying it, I, I said to my cousin who was so there to me, I was like, "You have to try this. She's amazing." Like I did it in ten minutes. I was always crying. I was like, "I can't go any further," and she raved about her session with you. So what does yeah. it look like? And um, just for people who don't know you can heal anything with this right you can go in and tap into you can yeah 
Um, I don't know what's there. I have to say up front, you know, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist and I'm not a medical doctor. So I can't, I can't promise. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. really promise a miraculous, but what it does is it's a really quick, deep tool to help you change your state. And that helps you lighten your life. Like that feeling of relief, that feeling of, oh my goodness, I didn't realize. It's like you've put down a 10 ton backpack that you didn't know you were wearing. And so it's that kind of going, oh, okay. There it is. Now, depending on who you are and what your challenge is, yes, it then can help you release because you've revealed it. And that's where the release comes from. Much like my, oh my God, I want to be wanted by my dad. I, I had no idea that that was what was under everything. And as soon as I admitted that to myself, everything else fell away and life became so much easier. So those level of revelations can happen um sometimes in in one session sometimes you know over a, a period of time but let me give you some really basic exercises that everyone can do to shift their state so a session a one-on-one -on -one session with me looks like it's 45 minutes and you come in and we pick something at whatever level you are willing to go to so if there's a surface level problem, we can go there. And very often the surface level problems, I had someone, it was like, she chose the washing up because everything else felt too emotional. Right? So then we go into how that feels physically in your body. I always work from the physical because it's holding onto your cell memory. And I ask you to imagine, I was like, right, what is that? How does that feel? That frustration with the washing up, where do you feel it in your body? She's like, oh, in my belly and in my chest, it just gets really tight. I'm just so annoyed. I'm like, okay, if it had a color, what color would it have? If it had a shape? So I get you to really feel it. And then I say, if it had a sound, what would that sound? If that frustration had a sound, if that anger had a sound, if that pain had a, what? And it, the sound is different for everyone. There's no right or wrong. And then I invite you and encourage you and I hold the space for you. And I sometimes sound with you if you want me to. We sound it out, we allow, and that's acknowledging it. Because so often we hide from our fear. We hide from our pain. We haven't acknowledged it. And you're giving it a voice. And very often the reason this stuff eats away at us is because it feels there's a part of you that feels unheard so we give it a voice so we let that out we sound it sound it sound it and then we come into space and we feel where it's at and we check in again and sometimes we sound a little bit more and then what we do is we find that space and we find us and I invite you to find a sound that would nurture those feelings that would say I hear you you've been heard uh, I acknowledge you and you, I take care of you and I promise not to ignore you. So we then end, so we always end with nurturing sounds so that you're, so that you feel like you're, you're wrapping a blanket around yourself metaphorically. Um, and so that's, that's how a one-on-one -on -one 45 minute sound healing session with me works. I, I do much a whole variety of other things i have online sound healing courses and three-day retreats and seven-day retreats and one-on-one -on -one intensives so you can have anything from a half day to a three-day intensive with me the three-day intensive is a whole spiritual energetic rebirth life like we go away when we're allowed to and that is really nice yeah yeah so so but that's how it works but the joy of this stuff is you can use it and that's what i want to leave us with is you can use it to change your state in as little as 15 seconds yeah so oh i've just lost your mic oh there you go you're back i don't know why it's been doing this you forgot one last thing though you do end the session with giving it with a gift you give the sound back and when you did that with me and you you said you I think you asked me like what was my intention for the day or what did I want to yes. create in my day and then you you sounded that back to me that was really nice that is true. that was okay. really nice yeah yeah so then I, I give you a sound for you to receive so that you can be uh, held and supported that was um so here's here's the 15 seconds magic Right. So if you are frenetic, if you're in that headspace of, oh my God, I've got 500 million things to do and I don't know, or you're really stressed or you're frustrated or you're angry, or actually if you're frustrated or you're angry, I just suggest that you just go, Grah! <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. It's so good. Right. So, so there you go. If you're frustrated or angry, have a grrrr, like gnash your teeth and, and allow it to be heard. 
and then come into your heart and do this one. So this is great for if you're, if you find yourself huffing and puffing and or sighing a lot, you need to come out of your head and back into your body. So you place your hand on your heart and you breathe in through your nose and then you just hum. So you just hum out. And the reason you have your hand on your heart is because it's finding that the space that physically vibrates here in your chest. Okay, okay. So from here, do you come out of your mouth or just with your mouth closed? The hum, so mouth closed. So just hum. And you may, may need to play around with the sound. You may go, hmm. Yeah. Mm. To find where that hum here is. But just by humming, hmm. And if you want, you can open it up as the heart, ha. Hmm. Brings you out of your head and into your body so that you can rest and ground and. If you're feeling really tired and you've got no energy and you're lethargic and everything's feeling like, ah, oh, and you, you've got to go and do something and you, you can't just take yourself to bed and snuggle up, which is what I would generally suggest if you're feeling that. Blah. But also if you're a bit depressed, if you know that this is a depression pattern, the way you can use your voice to create energy and to uplift yourself, again, play with the hum if you like, um, but on higher tones and faster. So mm -hmm, you'll probably feel it resonating around your nose, your lips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, if you're feeling brave, because the opening of the mouth is what makes a lot of people feel afraid. So that's why the hum is great, because you feel it inside. But then you can go, ah, and if you're embarrassed and you find yourself laughing, great, because laughter is the highest vibration sound there is, right? So it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, so you can just, and then you can, you know, so just allow yourself to play. So if you want to calm yourself, it's low and slow. If you want to raise your energy, it's higher and faster. Okay, I shall be humming away this week. <laughs> Where can people connect with you? So do you have a Facebook page, Instagram page, Instagram handle, website? Yep. That is all at your whole voice. So um, as in the whole of you, your whole voice. That, my website is yourwholevoice.com. Um, my Facebook page is slash your whole voice. Facebook group is groups slash your whole voice, Instagram, Twitter. And when I'm on Clubhouse, it'll be your, <laughs> <laughs> also the same be your whole voice. Okay, I can't wait until we can start, because I know like off, well, I hope off the back of um, lockdown that people will start to do more retreats because I think people will need to have a lot of healing. I think lockdown has sort of like removed a layer um, of what is underneath a lot of the emotional unrest that we've been trying to cover up. So I would definitely look forward to your retreat. Um, so people listening, do follow Judith on Facebook yeah. and um, look at her website and then keep in touch. I don't know if you've got like newsletters that they can subscribe to as well. I do. I have a newsletter. I can send you that link if you like. So yes, that you please, can, and I can add it to the thing. description. Um, all the events are under my events page of my website. So yourwholevoice.com forward slash events. And that is my regular meditation, my uh, membership global sound circle group, the retreats, the online sound healing course you're everything is you're doing a lot it's, it's so all good. there and i fingers crossed everybody because i have a seven day retreat i have the dates booked for the yeah. second week of second week of may so okay. oh, wow where is it in devon in oh, uh, nice. southwest uk yeah it's meant to be in ireland but with all the current stuff i was i moved it to devon so yes by the beach yeah Thank you so much, Judith. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to definitely try uh, a humming session this evening um, in the bath. I think I'm just going to relax and just hum away in the bath and just. And, and if, if people want that one on one with me, then there is. If you look on the your whole sound part, 
for the 45 minute one to one, there is a, a special price that makes it 99 pounds instead of 125. Um, and if you let me know that you came from uh, Leonora, let me know that you came from her so that I can give my thanks. Oh, to Nora you're absolute, an absolute pleasure. So Judith, that was that was nice. Um, that was really nice. Love, light, and blessings. And I can and I hope and pray that you continue to to share this. Um, I don't want to say this healing modality because it's powerful and it's not. It doesn't have the visibility that it needs to have. I didn't know exist, it existed until what a couple of months ago we we met. Yeah. If that, yeah. So I I will continue to to promote and to support what you're doing because it's it's a beautiful thing. And thank you for being brave enough because it's not easy to come and hum and ha. <laughs> like that well because so, i'm connected to my higher purpose that's so. true and it takes away all your fear and limiting beliefs and, and it takes the ego away and it just lets your authentic self and and that's that's admirable so thank you so much for being brave enough to do that thank you you're welcome all right nice talking to you and enjoy take the rest care. of your week ahead and you thank bye. you take care bye